Gary, full focus mode and uh, supported at the weekend by the local crowd. Uh, look at that down here, the playing hall uh, filling up, uh, filling up with supporters uh, with the players now. Amazing, it really adds to the ambiance. I know that players come far and wide, such as the distant town of Amsterdam, which is a whopping 30 minutes away. I like how when I first visited Vaikanze, I was trying to gauge the distance, and it's a long train ride, it's such a big distance. I'm like, you don't know where I'm from. Uh, here in the States, 30 minutes is like half of your morning commute. So it's, it's amazing to see uh, the interest that Over the Board Chess continues to generate. But back to Anish, David, he's had two frustrating games now, not just the loss against Notre Dame, but the drop. This is the current position. I also think we would do well to rewind a little bit and probably see where we came from. Um, I'm getting kind of King's Indian Grunfeld vibes. They're continuing to blitz out their moves. Uh, Wei Yi is blitzing out his moves, uh, to be specific. Okay, so rewinding a little bit. This was a Grunfeld Slav. Okay, que early Queen A4. I've seen this before. I've seen this A4. Um, <laughs> Knight F3. Castles, castles. And BD7. Obviously, Black threatens the fork with Knight B6. White releases the central tension. Knight B6 is thrown in. Okay, queen takes d5, Yuri drops back, and this is how the black... Okay, I would ignore the question mark, I'm sure this is still prep. <laughs> yep. There's queen h5 number one, and queen h5 number two. Knight yeah. d3, preventing bishop h3 and rook d8, current position. Yeah, if you can't uh, achieve it the first time, then go back, queen h5, um, very active square, and... I must admit, I've had that exact position um, multiple times in blitz games, rapid games, until the uh, C5 move, uh, which was given a question mark by the computer. But it does, as you say, it does smack, it does smell of uh, home cooking. And uh, Wei Yi, just look at the clock times, he's gained almost four minutes on the clock. Um, and Rook D8 is a bit annoying, it cuts across all these Knight F4 ideas, White's Queen is a bit uncomfortable. It's total symmetry, pretty much, with the pawn structure. And uh, just about whose pieces are more active. I don't see any reason for Black to really be worried here. Um, I'm assuming Anish moves his queen. I don't know, queen b3 looks like the most active square, but she might still get hit. And uh, yeah, this is a hard one to call. If Black's able to trade off the light square bishops, never any problems long term for Black. But this bishop on g2, I think, is going to be the key piece in the near future, Daniel. Yeah, this is not the kind of position that I would want to be caught in from the white side without preparation. Just precisely because of what you described, it's very difficult to understand where the pieces are going. Like, are you supposed to go queen e1, queen c2? When you run the engine, it's very easy to say, well, of course, the correct move is queen b3, for instance. But walking into a tempo developing move like bishop b6 is very, very difficult. So uh, early signs, and I don't want to overstate the case here. I mean, maybe Anish is still remembering his prep, but. I agree completely. You're a Grunfeld player, David, so you must be very happy from the black side. Here, I'm a King's Indian.
niche on the camera. Okay, he made eye contact there with his opponent. He looked over. Uh, I think he's uh, impatient to make a few moves. There's not much that can go wrong for either side. And uh, okay, it's, it's taken a couple of hours, but we might soon get our first result of the day. Mm, indeed. Hard to find anything yeah, else to, <laughs> to say about this one. <laughs> Very little going on in this position. I mean, White can play rookie one. I mean, White can break the bishop out anywhere he wants it. Bishop a3, bishop h6. And I mean, what's going to happen is just we're just going to get a bunch of trades in the center, like bishop g2, king g2. The rook is going to come to d1. And they're going to find a way to trade all their pieces. These top GMs are experts at minimizing the intrigue once they've decided that um, it's time to, you know, wind down the engines and discontinue most of electronic devices and put your trade tables up. Like, it's that time. <laughs> exactly. Um, this flight is soon landing. Um, yeah, bishop, light square bishops off the board, rooks will come off the board. I think that's how this game will end. Um, so, okay, we'll. Uh, we <laughs> looking away impatient now. Right, we'll give these players some space some time uh, to onboard this flight. And uh, let's go to maybe more exciting uh, pastures. Okay, Anish. Oh, nope. teasing us there. No, nope. there's no hesitation. <laughs> pray for a miracle if he wants to win. Exactly, let's pray a little bit and then <laughs> and then make a move. Uh, in the meantime, another player you referenced, Anish Giri, who has been leading this tournament uh, from the early stages. He drew today. Um, so he's the first player to reach five wins, but of course could still be caught by some of the others. Uh, in the end, this one, Dania, a uh, very, very balanced game. Yes, I mean, a, yeah, huge surprise. This game ended in a draw um, on move 30, and the players there discussing uh, the proceedings. And uh, honestly, a uh, lucky, not a lucky, but a bullet dodged, shall we say, by Anish, um, who could have landed in some very hot water if Wei Yi had gone for a better version of that end game. On it, very strange to me that the, the speed and alacrity with which Wei just kind of gave away that advantage. This could have been um, a long struggle session for Anish, but it is what it is. He stabilizes with a draw. Okay, not ideal, but not a tragic result going into the rest day. Speaking of tragic results, David, I think we need to make a beeline 